If you already own the Fender Mustang Micro, is it worth it to upgrade to the Fender Mustang Micro Plus? Hey everybody, Jace Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. So, a little while ago I bought this. This is the Fender Mustang Micro. It's basically a, a little headphone amp. But the uh, neat thing about it is it's uh, Bluetooth capable, so you can plug it into your guitar, uh, plug a set of headphones or earbuds into it, and then you can hit the Bluetooth button, and so you can stream music from your uh, iPhone, your iPad, or whatever device into this, so you can play along with music for practicing. And it's got a few different amp settings on it and some effects and some kind of EQ, uh, and then the ability to modify some of the effects. And it's not a bad amp for what it is, uh, just sitting on the couch uh, in front of the TV practicing. Maybe you want to practice along with some songs. I Bluetooth into this and then play uh, backing tracks that I can practice songs uh, for gigs. Works really well. So then, of course, as with everything, you know, product developers want to get us on the upgrade cycle. And so now we have the Fender Mustang Micro Plus. And the Plus is, it's basically the same, same amp, uh, same form factor and everything, but now it has a little LED display on it. And I think it has a hundred slots for presets. And I think it's got something, oh, maybe 50 or more uh, presets already saved into it and you can select now you got on the side you can select the presets you can select the EQ you can modify whatever effects you're using and then it has a tap tempo and a built-in tuner um, but sort of the major advancement for this is that it also has an app because everything has to have an app. So you can uh, Bluetooth into this device the same way you could with this one. So you can stream music to it so you can practice. But then once you're Bluetooth in, you can pull up the uh, Fender Tone, I think it is, app. And uh, you can configure the different amps and different things like that. So it's almost like bias effects or amplitude or guitar rig or something like that. You've got an, uh, you know, an audio chain. You can put your amp in there. You can add uh, distortion pedals and different pedals to that. And then you can save it as a preset. And it actually has a save button on the side um, so that I think if you modify any of the effects on this side, then you can save it um, but most of the, you know, most of the modifying is done in the app. So let's check it out. Is it worth it to update? And the only thing that I'm kind of interested in is, does it make sense if you already own the Mustang Micro to update to the Micro Plus? So let's check it out. We'll do a couple audio examples. I'll show the app and then we'll just kind of talk about, you know, if it's if it's worth it
Okay, here we go. I got the amp plugged into my guitar here, and then I just have a mini cable uh, with an adapter going into my audio interface so that I can record the output. Normally you'd have a pair of headphones plugged into that. And if you look here, this is a chart that shows this is the Mustang Micro, this is the original. And you can see here, it's got a chart. So when you adjust the amp buttons, uh, the color of the LED uh, tells you what mode you're in. So right now we're in, in white and we've got the 65 twin plus compressor. And then we've got the EQ set to flat. So the LED is white. And then the effects, I think I have it set to yellow. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, like for a reverb or something, it'll, it'll intensify the reverb just a little bit. And then I don't think I have, oh, I, let's see what I have for effects. I've got the red spring re reverb, 65 spring reverb. can do, let's see, Magenta, it'll do a vintage tremolo. Okay, so I'm going to just turn on, kind of turn off the effects. I'll just keep the uh, spring reverb on there. And we'll go through the amp settings. Just, just real quick. So, so that's just a clean. Calling it a 65 Deluxe. A 57 Twin. And then this is a 60s British. Uh, now we have 65 Deluxe Green Box Overdrive. And then we go to a 70s British. to 90s American. And high gain, this is a BB-15 high gain. And this is a FBE-100. And then we'll do a Metal 2000. And this is Uber. <laughs> Not sure what that is. It's ideal for heavy aggressive music inspired by super high gain lead channel of the Bogner. Something or other. And then this is sort of a DI. Yeah. And then supposedly if you plug this into your computer with the USB cable, it will act as a audio input or an audio interface as well. So then you can record directly. Um, and I think that's what this direct studio preamp is so that when you put it into your DAW, you can add effects to it uh, through the DAW. 
Okay, let's switch it out and check out the Micro Plus. Mustang Micro Plus. And we'll kick on the uh, app as well. Okay, so then you just pull up the app and it uh, recognizes that the Micro is there. If you've got your USB activated, so you just hit connect. And then it brings you to, um, there's a list view. So you can list all the presets, 90s rock. Seventies rock. And then if you go here, you can edit the preset and see it has the amp and you can change the amp or you can change the settings on the amp. See in here, you go down here to replace. And then you've got all these different amps. And then you can save those presets. And then you can add pedals. You can add uh, tremolo. You can add different overdrive pedals. Uh, the one thing that's kind of confusing is it put the uh, Octaver and Sustain EQ and I think the compressor on the same spot, you know, as the distortion. So you can only put on either distortion or compression, which is kind of, you know, they should have put that over on a different, you know, like in this modify. Um, so maybe that'll be uh, a firmware update or something. So that kind of, I don't know, it'd be better to add a compressor and then your distortion and then the other things, but they've only got four slots for pedals on here. <laughs> So audio-wise, I don't think it sounds much different than the original. Um, to me, it seems a little muddy. I don't know if it's this guitar. I mean, this guitar is kind of bright when I plug it into a regular amp. So to me, it just seems like all the tones are really low. They really lack sort of brightness to them, which you can, I can, guess you can adjust with uh, the EQ and whatnot, but it's, I don't know. <laughs> But it could be that it's optimized for headphones or earbuds. Maybe that's why it has so much low end to it. It does sound pretty good in earbuds, I think. So the question is, I'm not going to run through too many of the presets on, on this new one because I mean, there's a ton of them. So that's Metal 2000, that's the same preset that's on the, on the old one. So anyway, let's talk about this. So, do we think that the new Micro Plus, you know, if you already have the micro, would it benefit you in any way to upgrade to, you know, the micro plus? I mean, if you want to upgrade, sure, go ahead. If, if, if it's no big deal, as far as money is concerned, why not? Um, but in my opinion, the old one is just as useful as the new one. I think the new one has a lot of unnecessary bells and whistles on it that are kind of cool, but do they really add anything to it other than 
just creating another device with more buttons to push so that you'll want to upgrade. Um, I don't really think it's all that beneficial. Uh, I mean, this is primarily a practice tool. I mean, you can hook it up to your computer and record with it, but you know, I mean, probably most of us that have home studios and are into guitar and stuff that record are going to have an audio interface. You're definitely going to want to use an audio interface to record. If you're just out screwing around, maybe you can figure out a way to plug this into your phone or your, or your tablet or laptop or whatever, and maybe just lay down some ideas with it. But I don't think you're going to use this for any type of studio recording. So I think the usefulness uh, on that end is, is kind of limited. So to me, it's a practice tool. The fact that you can stream music into it through USB so you can play along is, is great. So I think the fact that the original only has a few amp models on it and you know the the sound isn't you know incredible it's it's usable um i think that this is just fine so if you have this i don't think that you would necessarily need to go out and get the micro plus because aside from you know the app and being able to add all all just a huge amount of presets it's you know there's really no need for that i mean it doesn't really benefit you in any way so anyway it's kind of my two cents on on that i uh, got it just to see what it was like if it was any different um, the built-in tuner is kind of nice but it's i mean you know just about everybody has a snark uh, i would think you know uh, tuning isn't that big a deal they throw tuners in everything um, so it's i think it's a lot of i think the original is uncomplicated so that when you go to sit down and practice you're not messing around with the app and tones and things like that whereas this one i think you'd be more apt to just sit there and mess around with it and so it might actually be detrimental <laughs> to your practicing whereas the micro original is just you know it is what it is. It's pretty uncomplicated. Um, sounds decent enough. And you can stream Bluetooth to it so you can practice with actual songs. So that's my take on it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, which one do you have? Have you played either one of them? Which one do you prefer? I'm Jace Allen. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.